This video is a little bit of a deep dive into the copy feature of MIDI Designer. So uh, basically I've got this layout and I uh, like the layout, but it's too complicated. It's too much stuff to look at. So you can see all these uh, buttons and knobs on the left side, especially the left side. It's just too crazy for me. I can't handle it. Um, it's interrupting my flow when I'm playing. Um, so first thing I can do is I can just go in and, and of course, you know, hide stuff, right? I can go into here and go into advanced, um, hide in play mode, exit MIDI, uh, exit design mode and it disappears. That's great. Um, but I don't want to get rid of this initial concept. I, I might want this entire page as it is. Um, so the first thing that I can do with copy, and you can see this here, Looper 2 right here and Looper 2 right here are actually copies of each other. So if I tap into them, go into relationships, um, and I go into control copies, you can see that these are actually showing up as, as copies of each other. And the way that I do this, if I wanted to create another copy, double tap it, go into actions, go into copy, and now I've got a third copy, and this can be a totally different size. Um, and now when I turn it on, it's actually showing up in many places because it's on the right side too, because we're showing that same bank on the right side. Um, however, it's just in three places right now. Um, so that's a copy, but let's go over what happens when I copy an entire page, uh, which I can do now. Um, so I double tap the page, go to actions and go to copy and make similar, totally different, make similar makes new controls, copy doesn't. So I go to copy and now I've got a second kits page and I'm just going to bring this one over to the right side um, so that I can see them both at once. Get out of design mode, just ensure that it works exactly as I expect. So these actually do the exact same thing and they only send out one set of MIDI data. So if I go into more and I go into log um, and I tap on say verb here it will send out one line, not two lines. Um, so it's a true copy. So now I'm gonna start destroying the page on the right to make it a lot simpler and uh, see what happens there. Uh, basically what I wanna do is I had these Q buttons, but I'm not really using those, although they are amazing. I'm gonna, whoops, uh, make this sticky so that I don't have to keep, uh, make this sticky with the top right, press the red thing. Uh, the red circle and it turns it into a green circle and now this is a sticky panel. Um, so I'm gonna delete the second audition button, the third audition button, fourth audition button, fifth audition button. So I've actually got a vocal track. Um, then I'm gonna delete these pans and this second pan, third pan, fourth pan. Now these other things here underneath the verb, etc., are, are actually, um, they're not seen in play mode at all, these things. So I'm gonna delete these too, because I don't need them on the second page because they're on the first page. That actually controls how my reverb is um, being sent out. So if you were to look at them in play mode, you'd see that they increment when I hit verb. See how the layout looks now. I could obviously do some work with the spacing on it. I'm gonna change the color of this page too, just so I can see what's going on. Um, whoops. Uh, gonna go into properties and I'm just going to change the color a little bit so I can see what's happening. Let's do a random color, whatever. Uh, great. And now I'm gonna keep going a little bit. I kind of like this. Um, so I've got my filters, I've got my delay sends, I've got the verb. That's pretty close to what I want. Um, yeah, let's just see how much room I have left on the page and what I can do. Um, I'm gonna actually, whoops, I think I have a panel here. Whoops, all right. Let me actually move this out. Yeah, there, I, there is no panel. I thought this red thing was a panel, but these are actually, they're red because they're control copies. So that makes sense. So this is the first track and I'm gonna just make these bigger by one and I'm gonna do this with every single thing. And the 
This is something we hope to do in the future is add a feature to automatically size stuff, um, to automatically snap it to the same size. I think I'm gonna run out of room here, but we'll see what happens. Um, Yeah, we're kind of getting to the right side, but I think it's gonna work out pretty well. This thing is a panel, actually. Um, I'm gonna delete the panel. I'm gonna to go to Actions, Delete, and um, this panel, hopefully, will not delete the stuff on it. I think it's gonna work out. Uh, yeah, that panel was just decorative, and it didn't contain the stuff that was within it. I'll show how that works in just a second. Um, I'm gonna delete this one, because I don't need this. So that's already controlled. Um, I'm also going to delete this pan because that's one of the ones that I don't need, that I've decided I don't need on this new page. Uh, and somehow I ended up without the verb. So let me make a copy of that again. Bring that over. That's fine. Um, and then this uh, idea was to have the filter and the delay, so for consistency, this is getting too crazy. So I want this to look just like the other one. Yeah, we've got many designer users who are much better at using the app than I am, of course. Um, I'm gonna add a panel. And this is something cool you can do to select a whole bunch of things and move it around. Um, so basically, if I take this panel and I go to allow panel control, shut it off and turn it back on, I've showed this a lot of times, but um, now it picks up everything. So it's like sticky paper. Um, this was one of the earliest features of MIDI Designer. We just, we removed it uh, because it was all wrong and then finally re-implemented it a few years later. Um, so these are still delay sends. That's a great thing. I'll put this somewhere in the middle. Yeah, it's, that looks good. And this looper too, I don't need this anymore. That's just confusing. Um, and nor do I need this verb. That's where it went. I had moved it up there. I forgot about that. Uh, this is the vocal track. I'll put a little label there. Um, and now I'm going to also, let me see, are these things, I'm gonna lock everything but panels. Yeah, now I'm gonna add another panel. Whoops, I did that the other way around. Let me lock everything but panels. Okay. Oh yeah. Um, so I'm gonna take this panel and I'm gonna uh, just load it up here and do the same thing, allow panel controls just to move this stuff around. Get a little bit of size, that, get a little bit of size there. And this is the vocal track uh, and this label is in a weird place. So I'm gonna unlock labels. So the locks, I think this is one of the more useful features if you're really designing something complicated. This thing should be centered, this vocal thing. Uh, let's change the alignment to center, there it is. And that's about centered. Just eyeballing it here. Um, yeah, this will be good enough for tonight's jam and we'll see what happens. So now I'm going to uh, take this and move it to the left side. See if we can move it, yeah. So this will be the left side there. And then um, I'd love to get this old kits and put it elsewhere. Um, it's for detail. Uh, then again, maybe I'll leave it right where it is. If I needed to, I could get into another bank on the right side by long pressing there. Oh. That control doesn't look right in dark mode. That needs to be fixed. Um, but in any case, I could have three banks on the right side and then get into, okay, here's the third bank, which actually has extra stuff. Let me show you how I do it anyway. So yeah, I could move it off there. Now go back to two. And um, now I'm pretty much done with what I wanted to achieve just now. It's a lot of stuff that is still on this layout. It's pretty busy. I'm gonna have to think about it. Um, and also this thing is out of line. I don't know how that, um, 
let's see, Lab I don't want to lock labels, I want to lock, um, yeah, pretty much everything else. So there's this filters sitting back somewhere, here it is. Yeah, that got kind of lost. Um, that's decent. So now I think I've got the full layout that I want. And now this green is possibly offensive. Also, this isn't centered. Ugh. Yeah, this is never going to sit quite right. Yeah, there it actually worked. Uh, coincidentally, otherwise you'd actually have to count out the spacing, etc. Um, so yeah, the rig looks pretty good. I'm, I'm going to delete, um, let me unlock everything. I'm gonna delete the hidden controls here. So uh, delete this because this page is a copy. Now this would be a problem if we um, if we end up deleting the copy page. So you need that. However, it never needs to be. It never needs to load. It never needs to be seen. Um, so yeah, this looks pretty complete. I'm gonna get rid of the green because that was just to figure out what was going on. So I'm gonna go uh, leave it as microchip and just change it back to this, uh, yeah, this first page color. And that's my layout and that's what's happening now. Um, you know, lots of stuff going on in this layout. This has, uh, when I shut these loopers off, it resets um, everything. So looper off and it resets the entire looper. Uh, that's called, what is that called? Uh, oh. That's uh, on these controls and relationships. It's called button offsets to default. Lots of features, lots of bells and whistles. Anyway, that was a deep dive uh, and a deep meander into uh, copies, control copies and page copies and how you can use them to sort of do something with low risk. So you can see that this page is here, but if I go into the third bank, it's still all there, right? Um, so, you know, no problem if I want to get back to where I started. I'm going to change this thing back to two banks so that I don't have to look at it. Exit design mode, and there we are. Uh, so that's the video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for checking out MIDI Designer.